Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be looking at some footage that I actually shot this past winter when we were doing some product development, product testing for the new glass buckshot spoon. And uh, in this video we're gonna sit down with Bro, we're gonna be on the ice, and he's gonna share a bunch of tips that'll help you catch more fish this upcoming ice season and specifically he's gonna dig deep a little bit into the new glass buckshot spoon. So without further ado, let's kick this video off with a big walleye. <laughs> Oh, what a hog. We didn't have the cameras running because it's kind of slow today, but you don't need too many bites like that one. That's fantastic. Wow. You know, there's great times to use rattles. Clear water, dark water, it draws fish in from a distance. And we could see these fish swimming by on Mega Live. And when they get really close, you want to use a glass buckshot like that. And I tipped it with a, a shiner head. That really loud rattle brought him in plus looks like a perch and the fish are coughing a perch today big fish like that are just a blast to catch sometimes they take a little bit of time but that's okay here you go thanks for the fight we'll see you later yeah glass oh. box shot awesome you can't catch the fish at home so you gotta put your time in Next up, Brian is gonna share a few more details on the new spoon and also how he likes to work it to catch more fish. You know, when you're out on the ice fishing, there's nothing better to use for walleyes and big perch, as well as panfish, as a spoon. Spoons are simply a great way to catch fish. Drop it down there and shake it. And most spoons have some kind of action, but this spoon is fantastic. It has a super loud rattle and it's glass, so it has a real good image. If you look at it, this perch pattern here with the glass looks real. It looks like a living thing, and the eyes, just check out the colors on that thing. Now, spoons themselves, for many years, have been the thing to use when you're fishing because in nature, any minnow that darts or does something strange, the fish kill. It's They're culling out the weak, and so, uh, spoons have always been fantastic, but I, I like these glass buckshot. They're super loud rattles and work great. Tip it with a little minnow. I use a half a minnow or the, the bloody stump, I call it, because it's the right down the middle I break the minnow. And so in in spoons, there's, there's tumbling flat spoons. There's uh, your typical buckshots that have the rattle in the back uh, that are lead. This is glass. It's a little lighter, really zings out to the side. And just drop it down and the real thing is is to hop it the one big hop is to get the attention of the fish in the surrounding area of the weed bed or the flat or deep water you're fishing and then continue to move it because it's it's darting and looking like an injured minnow and well and then the fish bite on it but that's just a small perch right there uh, but fish are drawn to injured minnows if if you ever get out on a lake and you're you're cruising around you find a big school of bait fish uh, the fish will be sitting near them but they're not attacking them you, you can have a big pile of bait fish and the fish are all around them but why aren't they why aren't they eating them because uh, they're waiting for something to act out so if you get an injured minnow out of a school of bait, bait fish the fish will just attack it then that's why finding bait and then dropping a spoon down works really well and I've done really well in open water using spoons in the heat of summer when the water temperature gets over 70 I use ice fishing spoons in the summer and this glass buckshot is going to be one of those spoons that I know I could take to just about any location and pitch it out and hop it and it's going to work really well it's not going to tangle as much on the sand grass with that one treble hook and I think it's going to be fantastic but for ice fishing the glass buckshot it's going to rock them. I'm telling you, it's going to catch big walleyes and lots of them and jumbo perch. My new favorite lure of Northland Fishing Tackle in spoons is the glass buckshot. Super cool and it comes in a bunch of colors. Match the hatch. Stuff that these colors are going to catch you fish no matter where you go. Next up, Brian is going to touch really quickly on the topic of size. And by the way, this spoon comes in a quarter ounce an eighth ounce and a three thirty-second ounce option. Well, you know, we were just uh, just cut a big walleye. Now, uh, here's a big jumbo perch that came through, and I got a bunch of them. But I like to uh, use a spoon that's kind of a, a bridge between the two different species. So an eighth ounce is good, but a quarter, quarter is great for perch. They're not afraid of something that big, 
And you know, we're not fishing for small perch. We're fishing for big ones like that one. Look at that thing. What a beautiful fish. You can see the color in the fins. They get really orange and uh, kind of a neat little fish. Next up, Brian is gonna share a few more tips on how he likes to present this bait and also how he likes to take advantage of the really loud rattles. It's got that nice perch pattern to it. Just a light stripes and a little bit of gold, white belly. And you can see the that rattle in there. It is super loud. And I'm just adding a half a minnow there. And so the whole idea is I would rather have have the lure be as loud as possible because when you're jigging in place you're making a lot of noise and you can bring them in so drop it down with a lure like this and and so if you over jig it's not actually moving every time you move the rod tip so you watch it uh, in the hole here I always have slush in my hole but you can see in the hole that's about how much you can jig it to really get that thing rattling and it's really clicking. Crayfish when they take off they make a clicking noise. Their their uh, legs, their claws against their shell and their tails flipping and they got that hard shell so they're making a clicking noise. So that's why spoons work so well. Everything eats crayfish. Sooner or later every fish, uh, especially walleyes and jumbo perch, just love crayfish and at different times of the year it's a very important food source. So a real loud rattle is very important. They're used to it. So I'll really jig it in place and every now and then do a sweep because that flash from a distance looks like an injured minnow. And then, uh, then stop and just appeal to their senses using heavy noise. And the noisier the spoon, the better. So don't turn down the noise, turn it up. Now bro just talked a little bit about imitating crayfish and the whole rusty crayfish phenomenon is really interesting. So I asked bro to kind of dig a little bit deeper into that topic and I think some of the info that he shared was pretty fascinating. Rusty crayfish are an invasive uh, species. They're not native to Minnesota, but they're an actual invasive that has a benefit in Minnesota. You're allowed to uh, trap them. Uh, so people are trapping them and having big crayfish boils on vacation and they're in a lot of the lakes. And the lakes that they're in have really fast growing fish and have a lot of jumbo perch. Because that big old nasty crayfish that could break the tip of your finger, their, their, their claws are super strong. Uh, they, they, they have so many young and they're younger like little pill sized snacks for the perch. And I've actually caught perch that had over a dozen little baby rusties in them and walleyes eat the big ones when they lose their shell so they actually just walk right out of their shell and they're soft so there's there's a whole bunch of little omelets floating around for the walleyes to suck down and they could just shoot them right down and so they just pound them and it's not just uh this lake or that lake it's big lakes like lake of the woods uh the biggest down thing with rusty crayfish well they they eat a lot, they eat a lot of cabbage. So you like fishing cabbage? Well, you can hardly find any cabbage when they come through because they just eat it and they can't, uh, they, they love it. But there's a lot of other vegetations they leave alone, like sand grass and normally grows really short on some lakes and isn't really a player as far as cover, gets really tall when there's nothing uh, blocking the sunlight. And so that stuff grows really tall and the walleye start using it and they don't eat cara that skeletal fragmented pillowy stuff that has no roots uh, so that stuff's still good and there's vegetation that they don't eat so it's an it's an invasive that hasn't really bothered my style of fishing and if anything any kind of northern milfoil or even some lakes have eurasian mil water milfoil it hasn't really bothered it um but they they're they do eat a lot of a lot of uh cabbage outside of that it's a it's a great food source freshwater shrimp are awesome but the crayfish are bigger they're getting instead of eating a little chicken wing they're eating a chicken breast they're getting big chunks of food and i've noticed uh, the lakes that have uh, rusties as an invasive seem to have a lot of big perch in them and and fast growing walleyes and wherever the rusties are hanging in the summertime on steep edges in some of the lakes where you can look down and see them they'll be congregated and not far, 
there'll be walleyes hanging ready to feed on them at night when they can't see as well so uh, there's there's always a benefit to stuff and to me that's not a bad thing just be careful grabbing them because they pinch hard check this out you see on their jaw right there it's blue this is a crayfish eater when they eat crayfish the natural iodine from the crayfish dyes their jaw blue so you get them blue lips that's why that happens so this is a rusty crayfish eater right here and you know you could probably figure out where i'm at if you look to see where rusties exist that's the only clue i'll give you but i won't tell you what state i'm in <laughs> here you go buddy go back they're fun to catch those are really good eating but i already got food waiting for me at home so i'm just gonna have fun catching them Next up, Ryan is going to share some tips that you can use when the fish aren't smashing your bait and they're just missing it. Oh, missed them. Come on back. Give me another bite. Just a little love tap. There he is. Come on, Jumbo Perch. Yeah, look at that. He's jumping. He's jumping right into my hand. Look at that. He loved that glass buckshot. That rattled you. He just came in. He hit it so hard he'd miss it. So, you know, they actually, uh, fish can miss baits, just like a little bit of clumsiness as they come in, but uh, not the biggest perch in the lake, but we're catching a lot of nice ones today. But fun, love what, it. What are you doing when, they, when they're missing it a lot? When the fish are missing it, it's time to slow it down. Uh, you, you can watch them on an aqua view and they're slowly turning and they'll try at it again and they'll try it again you know you're talking about cold water fish and they're not moving super fast they don't turn really fast sometimes they will when they're really really turned on but uh, just give them a chance to catch it I've, I've seen that many times in a boat for crappies even walleyes in clear lakes where you can see a walleye come up and miss it and you stop for a second and they inhale it so it's important to to kind of cater to the fish by watching them on your your aqua view or your hummingbird you can see if they're there if they miss it or if they're just uh rearing back to hammer it and sometimes there ain't no missing at all they just eat it but uh most of the time you have to work for them next up brian is going to show off a few of the really cool colors that they have in the new glass buckshot i have natural perch is is a good one but also this really nice green perch look at that with the barring the stripes and it's kind of got the kind of greenish gold side dark back lighter belly which is very important that's going to work everywhere that's going to work anywhere in the midwest wisconsin michigan minnesota dakotas that's going to be a fantastic reliable bait when i'm up at lake of the woods i like something with a little bit more uh, pink and there again i think that's that rusty crayfish relationship there's pink you can see it's got a real dark red on the belly you can see the rattle it's glass dark back and it's pink and that's that's a super good color for there one side's a little lighter pink and that's a a tried and true bait for lake of the woods if you're out fishing some of those darker tan and stained lakes uh orange with that nice yellow bright chartreuse yellow in there um and then the white fantastic color in red lake that's going to be a good one and red loves perch uh perch patterns uh, of course you got to have glow white that's just cool it's got that real kind of bright kind of scaly looking white um that's going to look like represent a shiner in the distance when shiners are flashing and moving there's a lot of white to their sides and it gives it that look of course if you get into clear glacial lakes the blues with a little bit of an orange belly dark back that is really a cool color and that's going to be good in gin clear waters and then smaller sizes and large sizes so when you're when you're going to the large size uh for instance here i'll, I'll put one up you're fishing uh, with this lime green back, white belly. That's going to be a great, great lakes color. That's going to work everywhere. Um, that's going to be good all the time. Uh, deeper, shallow water. Looks just like a minnow. Has a nice, uh, I, some eyes on there that are built in. It's super loud. I think that's going to be fantastic. But how about some small ones? 
you're on some finicky perch, Devil's Lake, or Wabe, or up at Leech Lake, that natural perch, that little bit of gold and dark barring, fantastic. And that's going to be right uh, the size for crappies. That's going to be really good for everything. And so smaller uh, baits with that high detail. And look at that pink with a chartreuse belly and clear. Fantastic. Picasso for panfish. That's going to be super good. Um, and you could just see there's a big natural perch with the stripes and barring. Fantastic. That's all going to work good. And you know, so it doesn't hurt to have a bunch of different colors. You're washing colors and you watch the fish react differently. And so I've I've been using different colors and I went to the natural perch and it's been dynamite. And I up, up the size a little bit because they're kind of aggressive today. So, uh, but I, I tried other stuff and the past couple lakes I was on, that lime green with the white belly was fantastic. But here, they went natural perch. What's your favorite line to use when you're spoon fishing through the ice. Whether it's fluorocarbon, mono, braid, copolymer, there's a lot of different options and they kind of have their own different characteristic. Bro is going to share his two cents on that topic. It's really key to have a thin, strong line and something that's abrasive resistant because the bottom of the hole under a microscope is a whole bunch of little razor blades and it's going to cut up your line so I like to use fluorocarbon, and fluorocarbon has a better sink rate, and it's all about staying vertical because we're ice fishing. We're not pitching. We're not pitching at all. We're staying straight up and down. So with a better sink rate, abrasive, resistance, fluorocarbon's in. Give me clear, because I fish a lot of clear bodies of water, and even the dark stain lakes, line is a deterrent. So thin, clear, strong line, and I use sunline. I have really good luck with it. Uh, but good sink rate, stay straight. Well, that's about all we got for you in this video. Special thanks to Bro for sharing the good info. And uh, if you're looking for some more details on the new glass buckshot spoon, you can head over to northlandtackle.com and uh, you can actually purchase the spoons there as well if you'd like. But as soon as the local retailers start getting the uh, ice assortments up on the shelves, which I am starting to see a little bit more now, uh, you can purchase it there as well. So uh, thank you for watching all the way to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it and you learned something, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below because we have a lot more content coming in the future. And until then, we'll see you in the next one.